Hi, my name is Abdul and today I'll be presenting my 14 and 4 project. The main idea of my project is to convert a hand-drawn flowchart template to a digital version. Flowcharts are a very popular tool with a variety of applications and they're mainly used to describe a process. Now many people are more comfortable creating hand-drawn flowcharts because they're quicker and more convenient to create compared with creating a digital version using a software tool. Therefore, the aim of this project is to bridge the gap and allow the user to quickly sketch the flowchart template that they would like to use, then take a picture of the flowchart and pass it through an application that will create a digital version of the flowchart that the user can edit right away. To look at some related works, I'll be looking at the methodology proposed by Chien Yu at Stanford University, which converts a flowchart template to a digital one in real time. The outline of the methodology can be seen in the figure below. It starts with some pre-processing steps and then is followed by a shapes classification step where they predict the geometrical shapes of the flowchart components using the area of the shape divided by the area of the bounding box. Finally, the last steps in their methodology involves finding a relationship between the shapes and the arrows and then reconstructing the flowchart digitally. The main disadvantage of the, of the described shape classifier is that handwritten shapes are drawn slightly differently by different people. So there's an element of variability in the way that people draw shapes. Therefore, a single ratio would not be sufficient to have a robust classifier. Therefore, this project will aim at improving the classification and pre-processing steps suggested in this paper. My proposed methodology can be seen in this diagram. Firstly, the image will be binarized and then the shapes and arrows will be found and isolated. After that, the shapes are separated from the arrows for further analysis. After that, the shapes will be classified through training an SVM model, and the arrows will be analyzed to match them to their respective shapes. And finally, the flowchart is reconstructed digitally. To make this project achievable as a course project, the following assumptions will be made. Classified shapes will be restricted to hand-drawn rectangles, diamonds, circles, and triangles. The arrows in the flowchart should always be straight. There should be no intersection among arrows, and the project focuses solely on creating a digital template, therefore all input flowcharts should not be filled with words. The first step involves creating a binary image of the flowchart. This is important as it will make the process of separating the flowchart components from the background an easier task. To do this, the image is first converted to grayscale and then the image is blurred using a Gaussian filter. After that, a thresholding technique will have to be considered to turn it into a binary image. Due to the shadows that might be present on the flowchart, and the varying contrast levels across different parts of the image, as you can see here. A global thresholding technique will not work well. Therefore, I chose adaptive thresholding for this application. After adaptive thresholding, there might be some pepper noise left on the image. And to remove that, I used a median filter. And the final step is to do a bitwise inversion of the binary image. To find the flowchart components, I start by finding the edges using the Kani operator. After extracting the edges, I found the contours of the image and filled all the contours with white. This will create a set of connected components and it will provide a clear separation between the flowchart and the background. The next step is decomposing the flowchart into shapes and arrows. The arrows can be thought of as thin bridges connecting the different flowchart shapes to each other. Therefore, morphological opening will be used to remove the arrows and isolate the shapes. Now that I have the isolated shapes, I subtracted the isolated shapes from the original image to get an image containing the arrows only. Due to the arrows being very thin, I dilated the arrows to make sure that all the holes in the arrows are covered. The shapes are then decomposed further by creating a region of interest for every shape. To create these regions of interest, I found a contour for every shape in the image and created a bounding box for every shape. After that, the area covered by the bounding box is extracted and the padding of black pixels is added to the top, left, bottom, and right of that bounding box so that the contour for the shape is clearly visible. Feature extraction will be done on those images, and to maintain uniformity across the different shapes, I need to make sure that all the regions of interest are of the same size. Therefore, the regions of interest are resized to 250 by 200 before extracting feature vectors. The outlines of geometric shapes used in flowcharts are highly differentiable, so HOG descriptors will be able to capture such outline information. Therefore, the HOG descriptor will make up the first part of the feature vector, more representative features could also be added to the feature vector. If I find the minimum enclosing circle for every shape, I can find the ratio of the area of the shape contour divided by the area of the enclosing circle. This ratio would be different for different shapes. For example, 
For circular shapes, this ratio would be closer to 1, whereas for a triangle, this ratio would be a lot less than that and this feature is also added to the feature vector. For arrows, the main feature that I'm interested in is an approximation of the coordinate of the head of the arrows and the tails of the arrows. I first need to find all the connected components in the image and then filter out the connected components that may be noise or are too small to be arrows. For the remaining connected components, I create a bounding box and then find the centroid of every arrow, which is the red dot in this image. By looking at the general structure of an arrow, I can assume that the centroid is always closer to the head of the arrow compared to the tail of the arrow. Therefore, to approximate the coordinate of the head of the arrow, I found the bounding box corner point that is closest to the centroid. And the corner point diagonal to that chosen corner point can be used to approximate the coordinate of the tail of the arrow, and these points are the green dots in the image. To do shape classification, I'll be training an SVM model. Since there is a clear margin of separation between the shapes classes, SVM would work relatively well. When looking for datasets, I was only able to find datasets of synthetically generated shapes, but the reality about hand-drawn shapes is that it's very difficult to draw a perfectly symmetrical shape, and different people would draw the same shape in slightly dif different ways. Therefore, I decided to create my own dataset of hand-drawn shapes containing circles, diamonds, rectangles, and triangles. The dataset was gathered by asking five people to draw the four required shapes on a piece of paper. The drawn shapes were then filled with a distinctive color, which was pink in this case, so that the shapes can easily be extracted when processing the data. After that, a video recording is started on every drawn shape, where the camera is kept static and the paper is rotated so that the camera captures the shape at different orientations. These videos are collected and their frames are pre-processed and added to the dataset. The pre-processing involves converting the image to the HSV color space and doing thresholding on the hue channel to filter out any colors that are not pink. After that, the image is binarized and the contour of the image is found and processed to produce the image seen here, which is added to the dataset. I was able to create a training set consisting of around 6,700 images and a testing set consisting of around 1,600 images. To create the test set, I asked five different people to draw the four required shapes on a piece of paper, and the same data processing procedure is done. The results of testing my trained model on the test set can be seen in the confusion matrix. As you can see, the model is performing well as most predictions are along the diagonal. And the weighted average precision and recall are both 93%. The classification results on the sample image can also be seen on the image to the right, and all the shapes were predicted correctly. After classifying the shapes and extracting the necessary information about the arrows, the next step would involve linking the arrows to their respective shapes. To do that, I need to find the shape that was the source of the arrow and the shape that is the destination of the arrow. To find the source of the arrow, I calculated the distance between the coordinate of the tail of the arrow and the centroids of all shapes. The shape with the shortest distance to the tail is the source of the arrow. The same logic is applied to finding the destination of the arrow. I calculated the distance between the coordinate of the head of the arrow and the centroids of all shapes. The shape with the shortest distance to the head of the arrow is the destination of the arrow. The image on the right visualizes the output of this process. The red lines represent an arrow leaving the source shape and the blue lines represent uh, an arrow reaching the destination shape. And as you can see, for every arrow, there is a red line behind it and a blue line in front of it. Finally, to reconstruct the template, I used a Python library called Flogiston, which is used for easy flowchart development in Python. I wrote a supporting class that takes in the classified shapes and their arrow relationships and does the required function calls in the Flogiston library to construct the desired flowchart. The resulting reconstructed flowchart can be seen here. The position of the arrows and shapes may not be the same as the original flowchart, but the shape selections and the direction of the flow on the arrows is correct. To conclude, my project has successfully produced a robust methodology to recognize hand-drawn flowchart templates and transform them to digital versions. For future works, the proposed methodology can be improved by using a CNN and adding more complex shapes to the training set. Thank you.